Hi, I'm Turner, and welcome to Through the Holler, the weekly devotional brought to you by Indian Hen Outdoors. Today, I'm coming to you uh, bug-bitten and sleep-deprived from a a night on the river, but we're going to get through it. We're going to go ahead and film this where we are. We're going to talk about Jesus uh, wherever we find ourselves at this point in time. So today, I want to talk about, um, you ever see somebody going down the highway, and they speed up, they may be running 85 miles an hour. And then they'll slow down to 60, and you'll pass them. A few minutes later, they'll come back by you, 80 miles an hour. And they start, and they stop, and they start, and they stop. And what happens is, if they'd have just stayed the course consistently at the same speed, they'd have actually got to their destination quicker. You see, what happens is, they, they would say that they're in a hurry, that's why they're driving fast. But you lose some credibility that are you that are you really in a hurry? Why are you not consistently trying to get to your destination quickly? Why are you trying to get there really fast and then slowing back down? And too often than not, this is how our spiritual walk looks like. We we may burn really hot for a short period of time over a weekend, over a church camp, or, or in a Sunday morning service. And then we slow back down. By the middle of the week, back on the job site, we slid back into where we don't look much different than anybody else in the world. And so in the process of what what is called sanctification, which is, by definition, trying to be more and more like Jesus Christ every day until you're called home, in this process of sanctification, there should be growth. I've talked about this before. Paul referring to uh, or telling uh, people that you should be further along. You're 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 like an infant. You're you're still drinking milk when you should be eating solid food by now. And there's consistency in that. And when you're consistent, there's credibility in that. When you are the same person on Sunday morning at the church as you are. Thursday evening working graveyard shift as Saturday when you're at your loved one's funeral, when you're that same person and Christ can be seen in you no matter the circumstances and and there's consistency there. There's credibility there. And what that tells the world is that you actually believe what you're saying. There's another problem. How do we get to this consistency? How do we consistently be more like Jesus. And th- this goes, I have a lot of younger people, people younger than me, and, and because the age people are getting married and having children is getting older and older and older in our society, um, as we continue to demonize that, people people look at me like I've got purple skin and eight eyes uh, when I talk about being a husband or talk about being a father. And, and, and oh, you you got to spend time with all them kids. Yeah, I love my kids. I don't want to spend time with them. Oh, you texting your wife while we're out here fishing? No, I don't have to text her. I want to text her. I, I love my wife, and I want to make sure she's okay, and I want to make sure she knows I'm okay. And in that is a servant's heart. You see... To, to serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have to have a servant's heart. And if you can't have a servant's heart towards God Almighty and His Son, how can you do it in anything else? How can you consistently uh, be a servant to your fellow man, your fellow believer? How can you be a servant to those who need help, uh, to your wife, to your friends? You can't. Not consistently. And so I want to live my life that no matter where I'm at, that people can look at me and say that he really believes what he says on these these devotionals or when I see him. He's the real deal. And I don't always get that right. That's what I'm striving to get right. But in that, well, I'll put it to you like this. I, and I've, I, heard, I heard it put this way by, by someone else, but I've kind of adopted it as well. I have three gata- excuse me, three categories of people that I have in my life. 
there's this outside world people that I bump into I interact with every day that I really don't know and I want to tell them about Christ I want them to see Christ in me I have my inner circle and that's something that's uh, reserved for a very particular person or persons and then I have what I call arm's length people and what about what I mean by that is your inner circle and it should be fellow believers in Christ. That's the only people that should be in that inner circle. You know, your wife and some of your closest friends and family members. Let me tell you what that looks like. And it's, we are so close and we are both abiding in Christ. We can hold each other accountable. We have a relationship where you can look at me and say, in private, and say, Turner, you, you, you're, I'm noticing a pattern here and I'm concerned. And it's something that, that's not, this is openly against Scripture. And I, I want to keep you accountable in that. And likewise, I should be able to go to my friend and say, Look, man, I've noticed, you know you're not living right on this particular subject. And, and I'm here for you, and we need to talk this through. You're, you're openly doing it. You're openly being sinful. And we can hold each other accountable, and we can... Uh, help each other in our shortcomings, and that's a very, very, very short list of people that should be that close to you. Now, this middle category are arm's length people. And what I mean by that is I know you, and I may even be friends with you, and I may go do things with you, hunt with you, whatever, but I can't let you in my inner circle because you know the truth told you the truth you you know what i believe and you continually and habitually consistently live in a way that doesn't align with that and what happens is if you let these arms length people into that inner circle they can pull you down and that's not to say you you shut them off and alienate them that's not what i'm saying at all they need a, a good role model. They need you to tell the good news. What is the last thing that Jesus said before he left this earth? To make disciples and be discipled. But, for example, in my own life, I've become really convicted of it, and it makes me so uncomfortable. It is a group of people that, that use profanity constantly. And they just, everything that comes out of their mouth is some form of, of, of something vile or, or some form of cursing. And I can't let that too close to me because of my own sin and my own flesh, my own sinful flesh and sin nature. Because if I hang around a group of guys like that that are just talking like that all night long, and I hang around and I let my guard down and start being buddy-buddy, before it's over with, my flesh will get the better of me, and I'll, I'll say something I shouldn't. Before it's over with, I, I'll, I'm, I will end up cussing. And I don't want to be like that. I, I want to be more like Jesus every day. And it's, it's not that I'm against you. I'm not. I want to tell you, I, I want to help you and befriend you, and I want you to know the good news that I know. We're all beggars here. I'm just trying to tell you where the food's at. We're all starving in the desert. I'm just trying to tell you where the food's at. It's over here. I'm not against you. I'm just for Jesus. I'm sold out on Jesus. And so, I can already hear people, boy, you're being awfully judgmental. You know, you know, only Jesus knows their heart. Yes, that's right. Only God knows your heart. We don't. So, because of that, what, what does the Bible say? For us, you will know them by their fruits, by their works. What is the fruit of their life? What is the fruit of your life and my life? Is our fruit consistently trying to be more like Jesus every day? If somebody walked up and said, on any given day, at any given time, would it be consistent? Or are we consistently, habitually living in sin? And if you are living in consistent sin and you're habitually sinning and you know the truth and you just won't let go of it, I cannot let you in that inner circle and let you that close to me because what happens is, is you will drag me down. Matthew 5.30, if your right hand causes you to sin, 
cut it off. Because it's better that you lose your hand or, or some other member of your body than your whole body being thrown into hell. Are we consistent? And the answer to that is yes. We're, it's not that we struggle with being consistent. We, can, we struggle with what we're being consistent with. So that's the challenge this week. Are you consistently running toward Christ in His open arms? Or are you consistently and habitually walking down that wide road that leads to eternal separation from God? That's the challenge this week. And, and believers, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, do not get discouraged by these people. Do not Look, they hated Jesus. They hung him on a cross and killed him. And he said, hey, it's going to be like that. What do you, th what do you think? What is he, he tells us all throughout Scripture. It ain't going to be an easy ride. Look what they did to me. But be consistent because... This body is going to fade away anyway. It's not permanent. Don't The Bible says do not fear what can be done to the body. You should be afraid of what can kill the spirit and what controls the spirit and its eternal destination. So don't be discouraged. Tell everybody the good news. We're all beggars looking for the food. And there are going to be people that, that see that consistently, consistency in your own life, and it's going to make a change for them. It is going to lead someone to Christ. Hallelujah. And that's what we should focus on. There are those that are going to look at you like a weirdo. There are those in the book of the Revelation, in the end times, in the middle of of the great tribulation and the apocalypse, there's going to be people see all sorts of horrible things and the wrath of God poured out, and they're still not going to turn. They're still going to sit there with a fist shaking at God saying, I refuse to submit. So don't be so concerned with those that are not going to listen to you. But focus on that one person that is. We, we all see thousands, maybe, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people all throughout our life. Give each and every one of them the best opportunity to hear about Jesus. So I'm going to close in a word of prayer. If you're within the sound of my voice, you have been prayed for this week. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace. I ask that you would give us endurance to continue to run the race and be more like you and that those would see us and, and hear your message it's not our message your message and that they would come to know you uh, i pray that we would have a servant's heart to consistently abide in you and i ask all these things in your name amen